G'day everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. Welcome back, um, thanks for coming watching my videos. I really appreciate all the uh, people who are subscribing. I appreciate your comments, um, I appreciate your thumbs ups. And um, I want to grow this channel um, because I believe that what I'm talking about is very useful for all Wing Chun practitioners and um, there's a couple of other channels that talk about similar things. There's um, uh, Sifu Nima King in Hong Kong has a great channel called Mindful Wing Chun. And he, of course, trained for a number of years with uh, my Sigong, Sigong Chu Shong Tin, the teacher of my Sifu, Jim Fung. And he's got excellent videos there with clips of Sigong demonstrating and talking. And then Sifu Nima talks about um, his take on it, things that that Sigong taught him. Um, as as I do, I talk about what my teachers, my seniors who all trained with Sigong at different times um, taught me. And also we talk about things that we've discovered in our own practice, which is the way it should be. If you're not discovering things, I don't think you're trying very hard. Um, the, si the forms, the six forms in Wing Chun and single Chi Sao and double Chi Sao are full of wonderful um, mysteries. And uh, as I've been doing the last couple of weeks talk about Chum Q, there's a lot in each form that you wouldn't suspect until somebody shows you, until you practice enough and you start to experience it in yourself. Um, another great uh, practitioner worth watching is uh, Bo Bazard, Sifu Bo Bazard, who's a long-term um, practitioner who practiced also with uh, Sigong Chu Shong Tin in Hong Kong and, and uh, had the same Sifu as I did. He started earlier than me, um, that was Jim, Sifu Jim Fong. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm always really keen to promote other people that are talking about um, internal Wing Chun properly, who, who know how to practice it, who've been taught properly. Anyway, today's episode I'm talking about something that's a bit of a open secret. Um, that's how I perceive it anyway. It's something that for many years during my, well, a lot of my training, it was hinted at, this, this idea was hinted at, but um, not everyone really knows what it's about or has experienced it. So um, to start off with, um, in, in the links down below, I've put a link to um, a video from, from Mindful Wing Chun. Um, it's, uh, the video is called Chu Shong Tin on Wing Chun Training with Yip Man in the 50s in Hong Kong. Very, very interesting video Sigong talking about his early days and then Sifu Nima talks about um, how uh, Sigong Chu trained himself um, and that in those early days most of the students just wanted to fight uh, mostly interested in you know heaps of chi sao getting engaged in fighting uh, whereas Sigung used to go up on the rooftop and spend hours just basically standing and with his tanso out and I, I would guess that he probably did other things besides tanso but he just stood there and waited for it to move, for the tanso to do itself and he came to that conclusion um, apparently of course um, Grandmaster Yip, or Great Grandmaster Yip, whichever one you want to think of it as, said to him, don't use any force, don't use any muscle at all. So Sigong, being a bright guy, thought, well, I'll just do what my master says, I won't use any force at all. Um, I won't even push with muscle in a soft way, I'll just wait there until something happens. Now, I don't really remember anybody ever talking about this specifically like that except 
back in 2007 when I started learning from um, Sifu Richard Antonini from Wing Chun for Life here in Australia. He came back from a special seminar with Sigong in Sydney and I think they, him and Sifu Ivan Howe, my other friend and teacher, they spent a week in Sydney with Sigong and um, he said something to the effect of Sigung said that when when you do your tan sao or your punch or anything, it should be as if there's a wind blowing through you, the wind blowing leaves that makes it go. So it sort of inferred that you didn't make it happen, that the wind blew you. And because I've got a artist's mind, a sort of a meditator's mind, and, you know, which meditation and yoga and such like I've been doing for many years um, from before I started Wing Chun. Um, I, I sort of am fascinated by such things because I know they're real. I'm interested in finding out what it's about. So that stuck in my head and I remember writing it down in one of my notebooks and then I sort of accidentally came across an idea uh, or I came across, well, I came up with an idea for one thing that led to an experience of something else. So if, any, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen the ones where I talk about using these little light, um, you know, kids pool balls. They're, they're for little kids to play in a, a ball pit. 10 bucks for 100 at the local um, supermarket. Now I started using these purely to um, help me in my training to stay, not just in Sinem Dao, but in you know, Chum Q and Bill G, I, I use these to keep my mind in one hand while the other hand's doing something. And it's it started off just as being able to keep my proprioceptive focus on my whole body and particularly on one side when the other side was doing something. And, you know, this is another video. There's lots of videos and all these things, but, you know, one of the main problems we have is we, we're doing things up here and we forgot all about our legs. And, and you know, a big part of getting to that sung state, Fong Sung, is to not forget any parts of your body. So I, the balls helped me do it, but the unexpected thing I got from it was when I was just standing, not really doing anything, I noticed a feeling of presence in the balls. Um, well, in the palms of my hand coming from the balls, but I'd been taught by Sibak Frederick Mo. Uh, we were talking about Bill G at a seminar he ran, and he said to me, um, put your mind in your fingertips and he was talking to me as a more senior student he, he sort of indicated this is not for the beginners but put your mind in the tips of your fingers and just keep your your mind there and that's what I now know as ye um, intent you can bring it to parts of your body so I've been practicing that for a while and then I felt this presence in my hand using these balls and then I, I just started playing as I do. I, I like to play with stuff. I guess that's an artist's mind too. And I found that this presence got stronger in my hands and I, I felt as if this thing, this ball was bobbing on water and it became a very strong feeling and I felt like it was holding my hand up rather than me holding the ball. I felt like the ball was holding me. So... I'm going to start to feel it now. It's 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 a presence comes into your hands, and I just sort of jiggle them a little bit. It's a jiggle. You can't really feel what I'm feeling, but you get know, the idea. I just sort of jiggle them a little bit until I feel ah, oh, and it feels like they're pressing into my hands. So I just did that as a bit of a play, and then I noticed the more I did it, the more the the balls would start pushing out pulling in, going different directions, going up and down. Um, this is over quite a period of time and it takes a lot of concentration. 
and patience. Um, but you know, if you if you just give it the time, sometimes I found that you know I like Indian music, traditional sitar, flute. Anything gets you out of the conscious mind, gets you in the subconscious mind, um, will help or sometimes silence. It's a bit hard to find silence sometimes. There's always noises going on around the place. But um, yeah, I just kept on following this idea. And then a good friend of mine who's a Wing Chun practitioner, grew up in Hong Kong, trained with Sigong, he said to me, you should take control. He said, that's good that you're feeling that. He, he said, that's chi. That's, you know, that's chi in your hands. It, the chi's moving. And, you know, he said that Sigong always talked about that, that you, we work on opening chi channels in our Sim Nim Dao. We, we practice to build these channels. So even now I can feel it in my hands after holding the ball. He said, just, you know, try it without the balls and tell the tell the chi to go you know you take control tell it to go out come back and i've achieved some success with that it really is not easy and some days just nothing happens it's just like i don't know can't get it up <laughs> other days it's like boom wow and it really does feel like you're just being moved by something else. And what what's happening, I believe, is that the it's a, a type of training that teaches us to, well, yeah, it teaches us, but it, it's not the conscious mind. It's actually releasing your subconscious mind, which is what the Nim Dao is. Um, it's, it's a practice that helps us to let the subconscious mind do it and the first thing you need to do is have faith in it you have to trust that this is real and and if you're listening to me and you're thinking you know dave i like most of your videos but this is a load of bullshit i fully understand i you know i'm perhaps a little too open-minded but i get it if you if you don't if you don't think this is real um that's okay um I've got lots of other videos worth watching that are more practical, but for those who have ears to hear, um, this is a real thing. And gaining access to our subconscious and let it do everything, our punches, our kicks, everything we do, that's really the point of Wing Chun. That's the true internal power when it does it. I don't hit, it hits all by itself, right? All right, so... Um, I, a friend gave me a novel, which is supposed to be a true story. It's pretty out there, so I don't know how much of it's true or not. But it's about this little boy who gets taken into a Taoist monastery and taught by these amazing Yoda-like priests. And strange, there's some pretty strange stories in there. But one of the, one of the stories that really clicked with me was they said, um, th this old master says to the, the lad when he's getting pretty good at his Kung Fu, he says, you know, um, you've been doing moving meditation, learning to, to be still inside while you move, to not change state. It's what we, you know, it's what we aim to do in Wing Chun is not to change state. That's, you know, stay in that state of Sung. And as we move, doesn't matter what sort of forces against us, we just don't change our state. So our joints can turn easily, we're relaxed, the power comes out. But then the guy said, now, now I want to take you on to a higher stage, which is standing meditation, where you don't move, but something moves inside. And when I read that, I went, yeah, right. That's, that's definitely um, a, a real thing, isn't it? So I just want to read you from this fantastic book, which is Sigong Chu Shong Tin's second volume of the Book of Wing Chun. And this volume covers the, um, the dummy and the weapons, butterfly knives and the pole. But 
at the end of the book there's a series of excellent essays and tributes from Sigong's um, senior students and um, this, this particular essay is written by Sigong's son Horace Chu and um, Horace is a gentle man and he um, very dedicated practitioner and, and what he writes is um, how he, his dad got him to to just stand and he said three years passed in in standing after which I finally got to know what the relaxation emphasized by my father actually referred to goes on and says before I managed to step into the real world of relaxation he's got inverted commas um, I guess he's talking about Sung because it's translated out of Chinese. I had made many guesses on the meaning of that word. After all, what could be said of relaxation? Was it the relaxation resulting from body movements for stretching your ligaments, extending your body parts or exercises? Was it the relaxation state when one lays in bed? Or perhaps was it just the something when one swung without effort? Okay, in spite of all my guessing, I still could not figure out a solid answer. After three years practicing the sheep clamping stance, which is, um, sorry, I can't remember the Cantonese words off the top of my head. Anyway, it's, they call it sometimes the goat grabbing stance or the, the three three adduction stance. Um, he says, I was then able to reckon what the real re relaxation was. Um, oh, sorry. I was then able to understand that the real relaxation was a matter of a higher level, completely different from all my previous hypotheses. Okay, so he came to the realization that the real Relaxation was a, a different thing, a higher level than just being relaxed in the normal sense. He goes on and says, Moving muscles requires one to set the body in motion. It is like a doll made of cloth and filled up fully with cotton inside. You have to bend its limbs and body in order to set the cotton within those areas in motion. Okay, so that's, that's normal movement, which any, any baby can do, just moving around. He says, yet the three years standing awakened in me that even if there are no movements, I can still make some muscles of mine move. It is as if there is no need to touch the doll, but the cotton inside can move on its own. This is, however, completely unnoticeable in appearance. Only at that moment, the true meaning of relaxation was revealed to me the moment that I could be regarded as starting the real journey of Wing Chun. So, there you go. We're all aiming just to start the real journey of Wing Chun. Um, now, people often say these days that us modern people don't have much time. Look, I'm 62 and I can tell you that's bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody, but people in the past had a hell of a lot to do, just like we do now. Yes, we have more distractors in the form of things, you know, supercomputers in our pocket. We have more televisions, but there was always heaps of things to distract you. There was always books and movies and games and people were more social in the past in that there was more sort of clubs and groups and everyone worked hard and they actually worked longer hours often in the past and people had more kids and believe me kids soak up all your time so the excuse that we don't have the time that people did in the past or the old Chinese masters had I, I just think it's BS it, it's you just don't have to be in a beautiful, lovely, glossy quoon like the sort that I would love to own 
rather than in my my lovely uh, setup garage to do Wing Chun. You, you can practice anywhere because it's this mental thing. This is the real relaxation is to try and find this thing. So um, as Horace says and as a, um, from Nima's story about about Master Chu, um, this waiting for something to start moving inside it's a patient thing. It's, it's a sensitivity thing. You need to quiet your mind down and you need to believe. If you can't believe this is possible, there's a chance you might find it accidentally, but if you, if you believe it, you can start to feel it. Now, I remember really 10 years ago, I met a guy who was really tripping on Indian sort of Hindu culture is into a bit of a thing that a bit like a cult and he said to me look you know I can make chi in my hands and make it hot and you can feel it and he was doing this stuff and he got my hand and I could sort of feel a bit of a heat when he went like that and at the time I thought yeah I'm just imagining it or it's the heat of his hand I'm feeling maybe or something like that but working with a couple of advanced practitioners who have told me about Qi, including a, a dear Chinese lady who's a great mate of mine who's about 70. She's really Hong Kong Chinese. Um, when I first started doing this, um, she was watching me practice with a high-level practitioner. And I'm sort of keeping the names. I, I don't I don't really want to just throw people's names around. I don't mind throwing Nima's around because, you know, he's a very well-known guy who um, is, he knows he's Wing Chun, but, you know, this guy really is terrific. And, and she said when he, he was testing me and testing all of us, you know, to sort of be effortless and move. And uh, she said, I saw when, when you could move him, I saw the chi in your hands and then I saw it turn off. I said, well, that's interesting because I, I could feel something, you know. Um, and then, yeah, he told me later, do this, right? Just get your hands and imagine you've got a ball of energy between your hands and move around like that. And it's surprising if you do that and just relax, you'll start to feel something. And I've been doing this for a number of years now, and it's amazing. Sometimes it just feels like this incredible thing, like it's a living thing. And it's sort of not exactly a ball, it's like a blob. It's ball-like, but um, it feels like something's really there. And this is sort of part of this practice, I believe, is just becoming aware that this chi energy presence of something that moves, it's, it's really you, but it's your subconscious mind. Just, just somehow to feel the presence of that will get you started. That's, you just need that bit of faith that this is real. And See, I'm going out on a limb here. I'll tell you a story that this is a real story. I, I was out in my backyard. The last house we were living at, we had this incredible forest and I was, used to love doing the forms out there. I just get lost in the, you know, the spirit of the natural world. And I was doing this and I had it really, it was just amazing. I was sort of going big and <laughs> like a great big ball of chi thing happening. And I was, I was doing pivoting and just feeling this thing. And I, I walked into the house and my wife was sitting in the lounge and she said, I've got this really terrible headache. I can't get rid of it. And I just thought, mm, it's worth a try. So I, I said, just sit still. And I had this big ball in my hands and I put it, put her head in the ball of chi and I was feeling it. And it sort of feels like it's bouncing back and forth between my hands and I'm, I'm just thinking you know 
go away, headache, go away, headache. And then her eyes opened really wide. She said, it's gone. And she said, it just sort of flowed out of my head. She said, I could really feel some kind of energy coming out of your hands. Now, you know, I'm not a miracle worker. I was just playing with this chi idea, but um, a few days later, the same thing happened. I came in, she was sitting there, I had this thing. She says, oh no, I haven't got a headache. I said, oh, let's just see what happens. So this time I was doing this and all I thought about was how much I love her, how much I care about her, you know, how, what a good mother for my children she is, what a good friend, blah, blah, blah. Just thinking love. And then she looked at me and she said, oh, it's different this time. Um, I can feel lots of love. It's just like, like love. That's, that's the, the feeling and the message I'm getting. So, um, yeah, for me, there's really something to it. Um, I'm just going to leave you with a, another exercise beside the balls, besides this, trying that, um, this, uh, gentleman, great practitioner who I admire. He was, um, one conference we spent several hours together till a very early morning, like about four o'clock. We from, I suppose from about 12.30 to four in the morning, we, we were chi sowing, but we started sort of chi sowing. Then we got into what he called energy arms. We were basically feeling this ball of energy between the hands and floating on each other's arms. And I don't know where the time went to tell you the truth. There was, we had no music playing. We were just both there and it was like time sort of stood still, but I felt a lot of interesting things. I'll tell you about that in another video when I'm ready to tell you, but um, we, it was a youth hostel. So we had these tiny little, you know, single cot things. It was another one guy came and started snoring and <laughs> he went over, this guy went over to his bed. I went to mine and I looked over at him and he was lying there on his back with his hands up like this and his, and his fingers spread. And, we were both feeling this pulsating energy in our arms, but I, I looked at him and I thought, mm, let's I'll try that, you know, monkey see, monkey do. I, I always just try things. So I'm not lying there like that and I could really, it just felt sort of right. So when I got back home, and this is a number of years ago now, I, I started doing that every night, probably the last three or four years, I've been doing this pretty much every night when I go to sleep. And it's another practice where I, I sort of do it sometimes nothing, sometimes quite an extraordinary feeling of a connection between the two arms. And I'm even feeling it now, just thinking about it. I feel as if there's this sort of like a smooth stone, like a living stone or something between my arms. And almost like I can't push against it. it they're just connected across there and then I'll get these feelings in my hands, in my fingers, sometimes very specific. It'll just be the thumb, the top there and two fingers or it moves around. Um, and it's a definite feeling like a sort of really some presence there. And the interesting thing is sometimes I feel like I'm pushing with this hand and I'm feeling it the other, like almost like it's dinting there. I'm sort of able to push in. And I know this is out there, but I'm just telling you, for what it's worth, I can feel this thing and I do that a lot. And you might be thinking, well, okay, nice. That's sort of freaky, Dave. You know, it's good that you're feeling that, but what's the use of it? What's, how can that apply to fighting? Well, I believe that there's more to learning than conscious learning. When I was at art school, I remember I had to draw all these really difficult statues of Roman emperors and horses and skeletons and muscle bodies and all sorts of things. And they're really hard. And I'd just draw and draw and draw. And then I'd go and draw figures and then I'd draw other things. And I never seemed to be getting any better. It just doesn't matter how much I sweat it. And then one day, boom, I just seemed to jump a, quite a big step. It was sort of like, you know, a wall. I was here just seemed to be every day coming in, bang, 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 banging away at this wall. And then, toom, I just jumped. 
Hi, camera just ran out of room just then. Um, I was talking about this idea of jumping level to level. Now, you, you'd think when you're learning something, you just learn more each day, you practice more, and it would be like a gradual rise. But my experience with, with art, with drumming, with other skills, and especially with Kung Fu, I found that you tend to just sort of stay on a level and then you jump. And the feeling is, my, my sense, and, and I believe this is absolutely true, is that your unconscious mind's working behind the scenes, you're not aware of it, you could call it a subconscious mind, but you know, that other part of your mind that's not conscious, it's working away in some kind of virtual world where it lives on the understanding, the skills, and then it manifests and goes, here you go, you've you've paid your dues, you deserve this higher level now. And that's really what I think this thing is, this this uh, waiting like Sigong did, just standing there, refusing to use any force at all and waiting for it to move by itself. That's so profound because that's, that's what it's about. Um, just waiting, just, you know, you just have to be patient and not try to trick it, not not force it, not try to uh, make it happen. I, it, it can sort of help, like obviously do your forms, but then stop and uh, you can, you mightn't be ready for this straight off. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think those who are ready will be hearing what I'm saying and think, ah, oh, yeah, I'll try that. Um, but I don't think you need to do much. It's more just once you get the feeling of it in some way, like Sigong did with just the Tan Sao, if you feel that moving, then obviously the same thing's going to happen like that and like that, Pong Sao, you know, all these things, all the parts of the forms. And then even, you know, really, I think, this surely has to apply for Chum Q, for Bill G, for the dummy, for the knives, the pole. Um, that's sort of a bit of a mind boggling concept, but this is what I think real Kung Fu is. It's a very, very profound thing. And, and I, I want to be able to do Kung Fu, not to just fight people, which is something I never do, but I want to go on till I'm 180 or at least a hundred. Um, always learning new things, experiencing new things, seeing what's possible. So that's that's been one of my freakier episodes, but I, I've been hanging out to tell you about this for a while. Really welcome your comments down below. If you don't agree me with me, please don't abuse me too much, otherwise I might, you know, start crying and I don't want to waste tissues. But I, you know, I can handle it. Um, I'm always happy to engage with intelligent, respectful conversation and, um, and chat about it. And um, please tell me your own experiences. And, and guys have told me about similar things in, in past video chats we've had. So I'd like to thank you and um, I look forward to seeing you again.